question raised. We as auditors had no reason uh, to question those costs or question those expenditures. Because they were essentially budgetary items? O properly authorized, et cetera. Mm -hmm. we, we have not performed an operational and efficiency audit. Well, you never do that, that really. That's, we would be happy to for a substantial fee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't think we can afford it this no, year. No, I don't uh, think but, you uh, you find that 110 that we can't find, maybe we can work something out. <laughs> and the, the, uh, the situation with the IRS, which was widely reported, <coughs> is, is really something that's occurring in other uh, communities and uh, was... Without malfeasance, um, mm -hmm. honest, uh, well-intended, although uh, just pure ignorance of, of the statutes created that dilemma. Uh, does anybody else have any further questions or observations? No, I would like to say I appreciate the extra time you put in. Uh, I realize that uh, the audit season is tough and there's a lot of demands in your time and I think that uh, you responded exceptionally well to the questions I know Peter put to you from, from all of us on the board and I appreciate that. Thank you. I second that. I would hope that uh, prior to your next meeting um, you will have the, uh, the final audit and management letter. Okay, I, uh, in view of the hour, uh, I uh, suggest uh, that we take a five-minute break, no more than five minutes. Mr. Knotts, there's a question. I'm sorry, I'm, Mr. Can I just make one quick statement? I may have been earlier and not related to this, but in sitting in the back of the room, realize that in response to some of your questions uh, in, in uh, Mr. Hayes's, Haynes's report, I may have made a misstatement in, in saying that uh, uh, we have concluded, if I did, I'm not sure I did, that we have that there were, in fact, violations of law. I think the, uh, the uh, I think it's fair to say at this time we, we, uh, in our opinion, there is a possibility that there were violations of law, but we obviously cannot conclude that until we've completed the report. And I, in the haste of responding to questions on that, I may have misstated. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, so clarified. Thank you. Okay, we'll break for precisely five minutes. Thank you. And uh, we'll reconvene. which I started today is ask the parents committees at each of the schools to set up a curriculum evening where we'll report on this work in much more detail with parents. I want to invite the board to all of those evenings and the first one was set up with the middle school and I appreciate the middle school parents in helping find the date for that. So this is not going to give a lot of information about each specific thing but let me just fly through it all. It's really substantial. Um, I'll start with the two areas of priority uh, that the board has selected for curriculum work. In language arts, um, there are seven, eight major kind of uh, pieces of progress. The K through three group worked on theme development this summer for five days. Theme development very much was a base of using our whole language uh, program to expand and integrate across uh, other content areas through the integrating work of uh, themes, but very much based on the work that's been established there in whole language. At, fourth through, uh, at grades four through eight, we did 10 days of what we called phase one whole language training. That was um, uh, training for teachers who had not received any uh, work background previously in whole language. This training has brought virtually all of our language arts teachers, grades four through eight, uh, into whole language training. Um, we also did a very short two-day phase one training at K through three, where some of the people who missed the K through three earlier training and some of the new hires got some work with Sue Welch in uh, introduction to the management systems and techniques of whole language, of running a whole language classroom. 
we did five days of phase two work uh, in grades four through eight. This, these were teachers who had whole language background, who did whole language training with us the summer before. This further deepened uh, uh, the training and issues around whole language classrooms. We spent, uh, the eighth grade language arts team spent five days working on the eighth grade, uh, the new eighth grade language arts program, very much a whole language model. Um, that team was joined one of those five days uh, by Dick Mullen, who's uh, one of the ninth grade uh, English teachers. Uh, he's also, as you know, the speech and debate coach at the high school. He worked with the eighth grade team in, in helping develop the speech and oral expression part of the eighth grade program and also begun what, we, what will be a very close coordination now between this new eighth grade program and the ninth grade program at the high school. Um, three high school teachers, Laura Giverts, Betsy Wiley, Gail Adshead, spent 10 days uh, at Foxfire training. Uh, we're going to be implementing the Foxfire program uh, uh, with a group of ninth graders this year. Um, very exciting uh, program, very much empowers students. We'll give you much more details about that when I have a chance. Also, um, we made the decision to go ahead and uh, uh, expand the portfolio assessment program that we've been developing f uh, in support of our language arts program uh, by, by uh, getting involved with uh, Psychological Corporation's portfolio assessment program. We're going to be piloting that portfolio assessment package in two classrooms, grades two through six. All the teachers will be involved with the scoring, uh, which involves reading and writing assessment scoring, designed to be part of a student's portfolio, but also designed to give us some normative data on how our students are progressing. Okay, so that's kind of phase three work at that level. And we're really moving ahead now in developing that kind of an assessment program and how students are progressing with uh, uh, language arts in a whole language model. The, the last thing I want to say under language arts, very briefly, uh, this goes for all the departments at the high school. Now that the high school is involved with the coalition, all the departments are undertaking an outcomes-based study of their programs. So that's true for the English department at the high school. It's true for all the departments. In math, um, lots of significant developments. It's hard to point to which one is really the most significant or the most exciting. The one that I'm going to point to is what I think is the, is the most important is that uh, two teachers at each grade, K through five, worked together for five days this summer and started developing our curriculum guide. This is a culmination now of three years of work with Rachel McAnellen, the studies that we've done uh, 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 through Gary uh, Record and our own reading of the new NCTM standards, where we're uh, making use of all the programs, uh, textbook programs that we have and we like, and pulling together um, a new math curriculum. It'll lay the basis for eventually this being rewritten K through 12. We are now in the process of getting, K through 5 has made a start in drafting a new sequenced program. Uh, we have, number two, we have adopted uh, three years of programs from the University of Chicago Secondary Math Project. We have adopted their transitional math program parentheses pre-algebra, their Algebra I program, and their Geometry program. We're implementing those three years of programs at grade eight. Uh, all of the Algebra programs at the high school and, uh, and uh, the honors and college prep tracks of geometry at the high school are all, going to, are all being implemented this year through University of Chicago programming. When I get the chance through these parents' meetings, we'll give you much more information about this program. It's a substantially, 
It's a substantial program. I'm very excited about it. This doesn't count on my time, Peter. <laughs> Your time's up anyway. <laughs> yes, Charlie. <laughs> and looking at the, the rules of order, I'm not supposed to interrupt speaker, but <laughs> I... We're not dotting the I's and crossing the T's. <laughs> <laughs> the eighth grade uh, math program, it, it includes both the transitional and the algebra. That's right. Okay, that's all I want to know. It's that's right. both of the Chicago. That's right, program. they're both okay. Chicago. In addition to that, um, I'm piloting the transitional math program in one of the six sections at grade seven. And there's a lot behind that decision and that story and you'll hear much more about it. In addition to that, the University of Chicago also had an elementary math project. And we started looking at those materials last spring also. Um, those materials were presented to the uh, math committee last spring and we really liked that material. We went ahead, we bought the teacher materials and the teacher uh, uh, curriculum packages of the elementary Chicago program for kindergarten and grade one. Wonderful stuff. Better sequenced, more articulated than our present uh, Math Their Way program, but very compatible to Math Their Way. So that's a substantial improvement. The reason we only did K in one is because that's as far as they've published so far in that elementary program. Uh, it's powerful stuff. We're going to watch that closely and see how they continue to develop their curriculum. Uh, number four, oh, number, I should mention, I want to mention that this decision to go with um, transitional math, algebra, geometry was done um, in a series of visits to, pi to all the pilot sites using that program in Maine. Uh, it was done jointly uh, with high school and middle school faculty who uh, went to those pilot sites together. We made that decision in a very collaborative way, but uh, uh, grades 7 through 12. We also decided, I had one last thing, we're going to be supplementing the Algebra 1 Honors Program with the, with the McDougal Littell Algebra Series also. We also made that decision, and we have some McDougal Littell materials for the Algebra 1 Honors class. The high school, next item, the high school is going to be implementing a math lab this year, which will be open most of the periods of the day at the high school for students to come get extra work in math or, or do more work. Uh, we're making a lab, a laboratory experience available for students in math. Uh, Two of our faculty uh, worked in a program called Working in Mathematics, which was a math camp run through USM. We ran, we ran this program at Mackworth, uh, Mackworth Island this summer. The two faculty were Charlotte Hanna and Pam Rawson. There were about 70 students in this math camp, about 10 of them Cape Elizabeth students. A substantial amount of math curriculum was developed. Uh, uh, the teachers who participated in that program took two university courses that were taught by Nancy Austin and myself, and that was great fun in foreign languages. Um, the foreign language team spent six days. This was, a, again, a joint middle school, high school team. This program was uh, uh, put together and managed by Judy Liberty and Barbara Cannell in a joint kind of way. Two of our new foreign language hires were able to join them for a substantial part of these six days, and they worked jointly in developing the new seventh grade foreign language program, both French and Spanish. Major piece of work, the new programming is being developed by both the FLES staff and the high school staff. When this all hooks up, it's going to be nicely coordinated. Tremendous amount of work going into that, and there's a lot more details to tell you. Barbara Cannell and Judy Liberty also went to a uh, conference in August, a foreign language association, a main conference sponsored. It was a wonderful conference. Um, 
focusing on the latest instructional uh, practices in foreign language, particularly uh, highlighting issues around proficiency assessment in foreign language. Profici proficiency assessment will be an important piece of how we measure students' progress in foreign language and also how we make transition for programs in, for students into the high school program. In science, Ken Plummer and Janet Nesson completed their second summer of training uh, with the Audubon Society. They bring that training back and they are in the process of coordinating uh, the, the, the environmental studies program through grade six through eight at, in, in all the middle school grades. And we are extending the SKIS program uh, into grade four this year. Okay, in, uh, the other thing I want to mention in science is that this outcomes-based assessment in science began last year and is being done jointly, uh, started jointly with middle school and high school faculty together. Um, and we've included in that group the industrial technology teachers also because they're such a related area to science education. In social studies, Barbara in her report mentioned the Afro-American unit in grade four and the Historical Society grant in grade three. I want to also mention that, that in social studies also, the middle school and high school staff, grades 7 through 12, have started, they started meeting together last year in pursuing this kind of outcomes-based way of reviewing content and curriculum. In health, um, we, had, we were planning on providing some training for grade one teachers in our Growing Healthy curriculum, which is our K through three curriculum. It's least, it's least implemented uh, at grade one. We had to cancel that. We were gonna do it in collaboration with Portland. They had, a, they had to cancel it at the last minute. We still have plans in trying to do that sometime this fall. We're implementing Project DARE at grade five. Uh, Don Tubbs, was trained uh, um, this August in Project Air, and he'll, he will be teaching with our fifth grade teachers this year in implementing the project. I would, re I would very much like to thank the, the uh, Cape Elizabeth Police, uh, David Pickering and Ed Tolan, who really have provided most of the legwork and a, fair, and a fairly high percentage of the financing to make this program pos possible for our fifth graders. Um, Jane Ellis uh, in August went to a training program at the University of Maine in Farmington where she worked on about four pieces of health curriculum. She came back and she began incorporating that health curriculum into the home ec curriculum. She began transforming it. In that transformation, she's now asked for the name to be changed to life, to, to, living, to living skills rather than just home ec. And that reflects a significant change in that curriculum to incorporate units of health curriculum into the home ec curriculum. So now we refer to it as living skills. The most significant change in our health program, however, happened at the high school. And let me just mention it very briefly. We redesigned the ninth grade health program, which had already been implemented. The major redesign there is that we've moved away from our physical education teachers teaching it, and we have our health teacher, Andrea Kerr, fully teaching that program. In the process of doing that, we've also totally redesigned the curriculum. It's a major, that's really the most significant change in health, and it has implications system-wide in how to implement health. <sighs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> one last thing? <laughs> I'm going to one last try. <laughs> I will skip over art, music, and phys ed. Let me just mention industrial technology, because what's going on there is very significant. The uh, state organization, uh, industrial technology educators, have been working for years in transforming 
the, in, the uh, old industrial arts curriculum into, industri into an industrial technology curriculum. Cape Elizabeth's staff have been very involved at the state level in helping that, in, in sponsoring and helping that transfer. It started with Cliff McWinnie and it's been very much <laughs> carried on by Gary Lenoy and Jimmy Ray who have been very active at the state level in writing some of this new industrial technology curriculum. So when we call that department now industrial technology, that's not just uh, a name change, it represents substantially changed uh, curriculum and instruction. Um, part of that change is the incorporation of high, of, of high technology into that curriculum, but even more importantly, is a real change in the format of that curriculum to a real problem-solving format. And in changing to a real problem-solving format, it, it just makes it absolutely uh, uh, integratable with the science work that we're doing, which is why they've joined the science group outcomes studies. So at some point, uh, both to the parents groups and also to the board, I'm going to ask uh, Gary Lenoy and the industrial technology staff to sort of present some of that new IT curriculum to you. It's exciting stuff. How long? <laughs> <laughs> Is this somebody here from the Cape Career Night? I, I wonder if it makes sense. Michael, you, you've covered an awful lot of areas. Uh, it's, it's five after 10. You know, this board has made a major commitment to curriculum development you know, at the suggestion of the administration. And I think, you know, we're, we're committing a substantial amount of funds, not only for, uh, for curriculum development in the schools, but for also development outside the school. And I think it would be worthwhile if the, the courier is an appropriate place to do that, is for you to perhaps do some sort of an in-depth interview to be able to cover all those bases that you talked about tonight so people can see them. Because re regardless of how many times this program is, is rebroadcast, a lot of the people in the community don't understand or don't have a grasp of exactly what all the curriculum work that's being done and, and how it impacts the school. So I just open that up as a suggestion that the courier, as we, we like to think of the courier as like an arm that, that reaches out of the community that we can uh, kind of tap every once in a while. If they're willing to do that, I, I might offer that suggestion because I, I think, you, and you didn't cover everything tonight because we wouldn't let you. Um, so I think it'd be very worthwhile if that's something possible to do. Plus, I, I would like a copy of the things you went over tonight and the, the ones that you needed to omit. Could, could you just give us a Xerox copy of your notes or something Has, in that um, similar form so that we would, we would have it for I, I gave own. you an update in April. Yes, you did. And, I wrote, the and I wrote work. another end of year report. I think I wrote it in July. Right. I think that's and right. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. I have seen that, I think. I, I don't have that. Okay, and, sure. and in fact, there's even more to report now since yeah. July. If you could update that, I think that's mm -hmm. very important to us to have. Why don't I try to update that and, and yeah. get it to you? Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think we should make sure that we mention tonight that on September 24th, there, there will be a workshop for the community um, regarding the MEA scores for the fourth grades last year. I think that's been mentioned tonight. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we're going to, uh, the next item on the agenda is Dr. Pelletier's report on the Administrative Council uh, two-day workshop this summer. I'm going to make this very short, and here's a one-page uh, report. Uh, the Administrative Council met with the board. Uh, there were eight areas that were identified for goals of the, uh, for the year. Maintain the integrity of our programs, establish a building committee, which has been done, devote energies to curriculum work, which you just heard, review the career ladder program and its implementation, and that study has started, and there's a meeting, I believe, on Thursday of this week again. Monitor the middle school program, the beginnings of a computer-based budgeting process, the performance-based administrative salaries for administrators, which is being worked on presently, and negotiating a teacher contract. Discussions took place on cost and budgeting, and several budget models were attempted to give us a picture of the year. Discussions took place on performance-based evaluation programs. It was suggested that we have four joint administrative council board 
meetings this year, which will be on a series of Friday mornings. Suggestions for workshops are as follows. MEA testing SRA, integrated arts, the high school workshop, career ladder, curriculum, and one workshop with each school reporting on their programs. We expressed uh, administrative concerns as well as board concerns in our discussions. And there are five pages of notes that were taken, copious notes that were taken in these meetings. If board members want all five, just ask Connie and we'll make sure you get them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, while we're under superintendent's report, may I ask a question of the superintendent? Certainly may. In reviewing an invoice transaction edit of six, dated 6 2090, there was a payment made to Dr. Rodney, Rodney C. Hermes for an evaluation of the guidance department. I have never seen that report. Is that something that you could get to the board? That's a personal evaluation of, the te of two teachers. He was the outside evaluator. Okay, that, I, I just need a clarification. I thought it was a evaluation of the whole guidance department. No, the two individuals, he, he was the outside evaluator for both of those, along with the principal. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I need to backtrack to the business manager's report, and I need to ask, we have a half-time teacher who is also working as a half-time administrative aide. Can you tell me what his duties as half-time administrative aide are going to be? Could I answer that, Mr. Chairman? Here is the yes, letter written by August 1, the duties of the half-time teacher uh, are reported here. In One short. Here we go. And naturally, throughout the year, there may be some additional things that the uh, superintendent would want him to do. But this is basically what we had planned collectively with D, myself, and the teacher. For the, for the community, could you read those six areas, please? Happy to. Uh, the first would be to review the five-year plan, the budget and maintenance, with an eye to streamlining the operations. Uh, that's something he's already started on. Review and analyze school lunch costs and make recommendations as to how to reduce the cost. And as you know, we anticipate a deficit there, and he's already started that. To review the custodial workload and bus driver's operation, to analyze all support personnel, update job descriptions, analyze square footage for custodial work versus manpower, and to schedule that. To design an evaluation tool for custodians, bus drivers, aides, secretaries, and all other support personnel, and to help in the budget process. Now those are for starters. Okay, I have one other question. One is the funding for that half-time administrative aid position, is that coming out of the superintendent's budget? Or is that coming? I'd like to know where, where that money is coming from. D? It's budgeted in the, wherever that teacher is teaching. Okay, so it's under salary, salary count. Thank you. Okay, the next item of business uh, is the appointment of a delegate to the main uh, school board uh, association. Uh, last year it was you, Charlie. I think you enjoyed it. Would you like to do it again? I would like to do it again, but I will give it the option to any other board member. Okay. Anybody it. else uh, would like to do that? Uh, Charlie did a wonderful job. <laughs> if you'd like to do it again, he has my support. You really okay. want to? Yes, I would. Okay. Do, uh, do I have a motion to that effect? I move that uh, Charlie Greer be our representative at the MSBA for this upcoming year. Any discussion? Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Pelletier, uh, you have uh, some nominations for coaching staff, I believe. Yes, uh, I would uh, recommend that we take this omnibus, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that I would appreciate if the board would ratify. Mr. Chairman, could we to? list those, please? Varsity Boys Soccer, Andy Strout. JV Boys Soccer, Michael Hayes. Freshman Boys Soccer, David Perry. Eighth Grade Boys Soccer, Chris Jackson. Seventh Grade Boys Soccer, Jeff Thorick. Ron Johnson, Boys Indoor Track, and Boys Outdoor Track. 
Do I hear a motion that uh, these appointments be made? I move to accept these appointments. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? The next item on the agenda is finally Sue, and with many apologies, Sue Weatherby's report on the summer recreation program. Because you have a written report, I promise to be brief um, because of the lateness of the hour. Um, you also have a couple of photo albums that were taken of our capability camps. And um, you can sort of scan through those as, as I speak. And those will be available in our office. And parents are certainly welcome to come in and view them. And um, if they'd like to order pictures, we'd like to have them do that by October 1st. If I had to sum up the summer program in, in, in two words, I'd say it was, it was a great summer. There's no question that it was our biggest and, and our most successful program to date. Our day camp reached its maximum enrollment of 350, five out of the six weeks. Our preschool programs were at maximum all six weeks. Capability camps ran 20 of the 22 camps um, that we advertised. Backpacking had such an overwhelming response, we added a backpacking three. Our North American soccer camp doubled in size to 132 participants this year, and we're now the third largest camp that they offer in the nation. Um, parents in Cape Elizabeth had the opportunity to host the English coaches, and um, we already have requests next year for more parents to get involved with that. We had 90 staff people this summer serving over a thousand different kids. With these numbers comes an enormous responsibility to maintain um, quality control and we instituted some policies this summer that helped us to do that. We had an attendance policy that ensured better camper accountability. Uh, we mandated fluorescent t-shirts for field trips and um, we did receive some unfavorable feedback regarding the t-shirts from parents, um, but our staff found them extremely helpful when we were in places like Funtown and when we took 300 kids to our all-camp trip the last day of the program. I'm curious, what was the unfavorable feedback? Well, there was a cost of $7 per t-shirt, oh. and if children participated in a field trip, we required that they wear this fluorescent t-shirt. and. Um, it was amazing how we could pick our kids out um, in, in highly populated areas such as Funtown or the beaches when our kids had these shirts on. Um, what we have decided to do is we will continue with the same color for two years so that parents will not have the expense of having to purchase a t-shirt every year. We also have instituted a year-long planning process and, and we have already started working on next summer's program. The first thing we will be doing is reviewing um, the valuations by both staff and by parents. Many of the programs instituted this year were out of those evaluations, so it is important that people take the time to complete them and return them to us. Some of the new activities that came out of these evaluations from last year um, were newspaper publications, and in your packet you have a copy of one of our weekly newsletters actually um, written um, by the children in the camp. We did such things as t-shirt screening and map and compass skills, and we did some mini bike extravaganza trips in the afternoon, and many of those things came out of suggestions from the parents. On page two of your report, you have um, a chart that really reflects the program growth over the last three years. Um, we too are being impacted by the large numbers in the elementary school. In our preschool program, we grew from 95 in 89 to 132 in 90. First and second graders, um, actually we had less, and I think that's because last year's kindergarten was smaller than, than the first and second graders of last year. So we went from 208 to 
to 197. Third and fourth graders, we had 201 last year to 218 this year. Fifth and sixth graders, 120 up to 141 this year. And our capability camps grew from 260 youngsters to 346. Uh, many children who had done just swimming lessons or tennis lessons in the past um, decided to attend the whole day camp. So there was a significant decrease in people coming for just one activity. Our specialty camps grew from 98 last year, 98 participants to 158 participants this year. And our total registrations for summer with no duplications were 1,062 children. Uh, you'll recall when we did the budget last year, in order to really evaluate our, whether or not our programs were self-sustaining, we took a part of our administrative costs and we incorporated them into our summer program um, expenditures. And we had projected that our summer revenues would be about 97000 They, in fact, were 112000 and we expected our expenses to be 127,000. Um, we haven't determined those as yet. I, I suspect we'll be just about at 127,000, and that is incorporating about 35,000 for administrative time and benefits. So the program is is almost cost effective now. It is almost self-sustaining. In summary, I feel that this was definitely our best effort to date. Um, we provided more diversified activities for children serving a greater age population. And um, none of this, however, would have been possible without a competent, caring staff. And from our summer program directors right down to our CITs, um, they certainly should be congratulated on the fine job they did for us this summer. At this point, I'd like to thank the parents and the program participants as well, um, for we really had a great summer. Thank you. Do I have any questions? Thank you, Sue. That does sound like a great summer. First question that I saw was this. Yes, Loretta. John. Loretta. Uh, I noticed that, that this year the number of out of uh, non-resident uh, participants was down. D did you de-emphasize that this year? Um, we did not. What we did was that we advertised that Cape residents certainly would have a priority until June 1. And this year, most of them took advantage of that priority registration time. And so when we opened it to non-residents, we really didn't have the spaces to accommodate them. Thank you. Other questions? Oh, I, have, I do have a question. Um, what's the percentage, do you have any idea what the percentage of girls to boys, is it about 50-50 or is it, I, looking at these pictures, it seemed to be more boys. In some of these camps. I don't have that, um, and that could be an interesting statistic and one that we could certainly compile easily. Um, it's one that I have not done. It is one we have not looked at at this point. In the capability camp, because of the nature of the activity, I think we probably had more boys than girls, but I'm not sure that that's true at the day camp level. It would be interesting. Thank you. Oh, I have one more question. When do you take a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I took a short one at the end of August. Nice job, sir. Okay, the next item on the agenda is um, the, the item that uh, Jan Solon wanted us to discuss tonight, and that is the, uh, the Gifted and Talented or Challenge Program. Thank you. Um, I'm in a little bit of a quandary here because uh, Wayne, did you wanted to postpone this discussion, or? Well, I, what I was hoping to do, Jim, is talk with Peter about a meeting with the board before presenting it to our October meeting. That the preparation that we're in the process of conducting now uh, to describe. I'm sorry, yes, the 4-5. Four, five. Four, five uh, really yeah, I, I, parents are really interested in, in hearing. I was hoping uh, to 
uh, talk with Peter this week about meeting with the board uh, toward the end of the month or presenting for the October board meeting. Um, our structure of the 4-5 program uh, for the coming year and ask essentially for the board's um, thoughts and approval for that structure. Uh, what that um, process will reflect are two significant factors. One is um, our experience and learnings, if you will, from Claire Ruthenberg's work last year, and two, the state's um, clarity within the past several months of um, the regulations as they prepare for the 91-92 mandate and their site reviews of local school systems. That's a fairly complex amount of information. And so that was my hope. Okay. Well, the, the dilemma is that a letter's already gone out to parents basically outlining the program. There, there are many parents that have questions and don't understand um, why the change is taking place and exactly what it all means. And this letter has to be back by September 21st, and I think that, that parents believe that very soon children will be chosen for whatever this new program is and would like answers about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's unfortunate that um, that letter has engendered um, some of those um, assumptions or conclusions. Uh, it wasn't intended to. We've asked uh, Mrs. Bell to gather information because it's a lengthy process and she has in fact been in the process for about 10 days now of reading voluminous materials on the children who are fifth graders this year. And I had asked her to begin the process of collecting updated information, uh, particularly from parents, to get an early perception of them, of their children, so that we would just begin that process. Um, the proposal that we presented last year to the board on two different occasions, uh, and primarily the one in the winter, um, outlining the the different levels or program options essentially is still the overlay of the program. What we're trying to do now and hope to do and articulate to the board is the structure of that to come compliant with the year away mandate, if you will, as well as uh, to seek to provide the level of services for children that we didn't last year. and. Um, and that Claire articulated to us in the latter part of the spring and early summer. So what, what is your time frame then as far as choosing kids for the program? I'd like to think that we can essentially come to a conclusion about children and program levels um, by the middle of October, but not prior to the board seeing this structure. I don't know if I want to wait till the October board meeting, um, but on the other hand, I don't know if a full workshop needs to be scheduled for it either. It sounds to me like we have to schedule a workshop as soon as you're ready mm -hmm. to <coughs> present it, because if our uh, October meeting is the second Tuesday, I don't know what day that is, but uh, you're not going to have much time, and it sounds like the program ought to get going sooner rather than later. Um, is it October 9th? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, well, maybe that's uh, soon enough, but it, it strikes me as stretching it a bit. Uh, well, that, that would have been the nature of the conversation between you and I, Peter, this week. <laughs> I know the board has a very loaded agenda this year for workshops, but um, this is some well, of the other thing that we could do, perhaps, is um, thinking out loud, is have a, uh, a subcommittee. Um, and then that subcommittee and your working group could come to the board at the October 9th uh, meeting knowing that there was no uh, major objection at that level. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know whether that's, uh, you know, procedurally, I'll have to think about that. Mm -hmm. Well, Char yeah. I have a question. 
since we're in a quandary, since you seem to be presenting a new approach to how we're going to be addressing these children's needs, what is Mrs. Is it Ms. I'll say Ms. Bill. Mrs. Is Bill. she going to be essentially from this point until we get a handle on what's happening here, just doing the evaluative process? Well, no, she's, she's she also start meeting with teachers. Because, I mean, we're addressing kids that were addressed last year's fourth grade that are now in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has to, to read their files to become acquainted with them. And that's what she's currently doing, Charlie. Okay. She's also meeting with teachers to get, gather information and begin the process of discussing with teachers their thoughts about programming, their thoughts about the children. Okay, again, this is a procedural thing that, that bothers me, and this has happened time and time again in the past, where the administration has made certain curriculum changes, have started to implement them, and haven't come before the board to get approval. Yeah, I, I second Charlie on that. I think this is just a, it's another case of, of the cart before the horse. And I, I, I appreciate the fact that we've got a busy schedule <clears throat> excuse me, both here and outside of here, but, uh, and we have a lot of workshops, but I would be very uncomfortable about continuing with the four or five changes in the, in the, in the program that we've seen piloted last year without having some sort of a meeting with all the board members. Well, that's Maybe what we I would ask. Maybe schedule a workshop. Well, I th I'm not sure we can schedule tonight until you're ready. You'll have to communicate it through the superintendent to us as to when you're going to be ready, and we'll have to work out something on our schedules. Well, I would like to do that with let, let's talk okay, tomorrow, Peter. and then I will keep the rest of you uh, apprised of what's going on. Although, wait a minute, let me thinking out loud. While I'm thinking, Barbara, what is your observation? I, I, would, just, I would just like to, for those folks who are still present and, and listening to us, that I, I really hope you'd reserve judgment about thinking we're going on different paths. We aren't. We spent a lot of time. Um, trying to describe an outline for you, a pilot project. We'd like, we've described to you how it's been in process. We've described what it may need to look like in fifth grade. And I really feel that this is simply next step stuff and not turning a corner. Mm -hmm. and, and we would very much uh, want to keep you apprised. It's been a little difficult start to the year. And finding times to get all this stuff done isn't, hasn't necessarily been our number one agenda item. We want to do it. We want you to be clear. We want this to be fair and philosophically in line with where you want us to be. But I really feel you'll find it's right exactly where you were told it would be a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Well, that's a I have a comment. Though. But the thing is, the board is unprepared. We have not been informed of the changes. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm taking issue with. Well, no, none I of the changes are cast in any kind of stone yet, Charlie. And this is preliminary work with okay. a brand new employee. Okay. And I also I don't lay that entirely at your feet. I lay it at the the uh, special ed gifted talented mm -hmm. director. He well, should be on top of that. If to I understand. If I understand correctly, it's not a change, it's a progression. It's a progression. And, and so it's a new program going into the fifth grade, mm -hmm. is that correct? Mm -hmm. but, Where but it is, I, by some in the community, as it mm -hmm. looks, it appears to be. I appreciate that, and it's change. one of the most emotional issues that we deal with, and I just would ask the board's patience as we scope out the next level of three-tiered approach to gifted and talented programming. Well, it would, it, you know, in all honesty, it would have been nice to have that conversation tonight before a memo goes out to everybody at home. Mm -hmm. I, appreciate I realize it's, there's timing yeah. differences. But in, in, reviewing, in reviewing that letter, John, it, it appeared to me, and I perhaps better go back and read it more closely again, that it was simply, again, asking parents for input about kids and implications people um, gathered from that if it was... Uh, if it led people to make that conclusion, I do apologize because I reviewed the letter and I felt it simply appeared to be gathering more information to help us learn about children. You know how those, that's like red flags in front I of sure a I sure do. I appreciate that. Start. And when I said, go ahead and send it, I said, now, now what will happen? <laughs> okay, so where do we uh, settle on that? Uh, you and I will talk tomorrow. Yeah, actually, um, I am leaving on Thursday morning on a previously scheduled trip and won't be back for a week or 10 days. And uh, I would suggest that, uh, therefore, somebody else uh, talk to you tomorrow in my, my absence. Jan? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why we have five board members. <laughs> May have more. 
the next item on the agenda is uh, a report from um, uh, Jan Solon on our uh, our search committee. Jan. Thank Maybe. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I spoke with um, Deputy Commissioner Dick Card um, in Augusta, um, and we spoke about the proper procedure to follow in selecting an interim superintendent and the qualifications necessary to fill that position. And I, I'd like to say that at this point, I'm really encouraged by the response that we have had. Um, we have a list of seven names of people who would like to be considered. Um, a search committee will be formed, which I will chair, and it will be comprised of any board member who wishes to serve, the curriculum coordinator, one or two administrators from the administrative council. Um, because of the time frame of all of this and the fact that it is a search for the interim and not the permanent superintendent, I think it's essential to keep the committee at a relatively small number. Uh, the goal is that within the next two weeks, we will have gone through the applications, we will hold interviews, um, and basically complete the process um, to choose the interim superintendent. And then at next month's meeting, um, I'd like to review, between now and next month's meeting, I would like to review the, the history in our system of how we have gone about choosing um, a permanent superintendent, what the, who the search committees were comprised of, and so forth, and report that to you. And I'd appreciate any comments or suggestions from the board. Okay, thank you, Jan. That was not a question. <laughs> you always look at me because okay. I always ask the first question. I'm going to say start. Okay. Really. The. Uh, the next item on the uh, agenda is uh, budget adjustments and reinstatement of a program and teacher. And as uh, I discussed earlier, uh, it's my feeling that all budgetary adjustments should uh, pass through the board. And uh, so if we do have, as we do in this case, uh, $51,000 of budgetary adjustments, I'd like to simultaneously um, have the board see where the money's coming from and where it's going and reinstate uh, staff where it's appropriate uh, if there is a staff member to be uh, um, reinstated. The, uh, the paper that we have in front of us refers to the home economics program and as we heard earlier, it, uh, it is now the living skills. It's not living skills and health. I've heard, I've heard living skills and health and it's living skills. Life skills and health. Life skills and health. Okay, uh, Connie, would you correct this, uh, this schedule? Yes, I will. And uh, does every board member have that schedule? Mm -hmm. Reviewed it. Um, I would entertain a motion that these uh, budget adjustments and this reinstatement of a program and a teacher uh, be approved. Well, I'll be happy to make that motion. I move that the $51,455 that was uh, adjusted from the budget and uh, saved be used to reinstate the uh, life studies and health class and its uh, appropriate teacher. Second? No, I have a clarification. Oh, I can't. Well, the, the first thing I have is The $51,455 involves more than just that one position. Oh and yes, I'm. Uh, uh, yes, okay. I'm. I'm. Uh, in his I motion, I'm sorry. A portion of that, man. that emotion say a portion of that, or whatever portion necessary, that fifty-one thousand four hundred fifty-five dollars be uh, allocated to reinstate the life skills and health program and its teacher. And and the other and programs other listed. programs okay. listed. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I will second that. Though. Second. <laughs> okay. Thank you it's been help. moved and seconded. Is there uh, further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? All opposed? Four to one. The next item is the approval of the portable classroom leases. There are three, I believe. Dee, do you? Uh, there are three. Last night, the, the council authorized the, uh, the town manager to sign the latest of these, because what it is is the other two previous contracts are renewable every year. 
talked to Michael this afternoon. The other two contracts will go back to the town council in October to be for authorizations for his signature. The superintendent has signed all three contracts, and they have to be in the hands of the State Department by October 15th, which mm -hmm. will meet the deadline. Mm -hmm. And these meet all the statutory requirements? But this basically does why we had done the yearly lease is that in, uh, in the past two years, not this year, the lease has gone up by 50 cents a square foot. This year it stayed at $8, as it was last year. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion that these three leases be uh, approved? I move. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? There was a comment made last night by Jane Amaro, who I believe is the uh, chairman of the State Board of Education, that as of this year, any portables acquired or built from this year require a replacement plan to be submitted in two years. So we're looking at a five-year life of these. In two years, we're going to have to submit some kind of a plan for that particular portable. Yeah, I uh, discussed that also with uh, Chairman Cogsall, and she uh, and I uh, discussed making that part of the uh, school space needs, although no resolution of that. Uh, we may, uh, we're, we're both going to look into it and find out precisely what kind of report and plan we have to submit. Okay. So, I just uh, wanted to make the board aware yeah. that this the particular portable has restrictions that the other two don't. Right. Uh, noted. Mr. LaBelle, I think yeah, I have a Just clarify. once, once, that's true, Charlie. Once the, uh, the state does receive some type of a plan from us, then we go on to the, the list of many applications. My question to them was, well, what if were denied, you know, construction at that point, then the portables will still be reimbursed. She, she, Jane Amaro, um pointed out that it's a plan. It doesn't mean that it's yeah. an a plan that's going to be implemented, but that's that right. you have addressed and reviewed the portable situation. Okay. They just want to confirm that the need still exists in certain districts as to why people still have the portables hanging around. Okay. Now, is this my opportunity to forget to hold a vote? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that was a germane observation. Anyway, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Thank you. The, uh, the next item on the agenda is the School Space uh, Study Committee. Again, I discussed that with uh, Chairman Cogsall, and uh, we each need more citizen, uh, <coughs> citizen volunteers to serve on that. Uh, and I would like to defer those appointments until the October meeting, uh, if the board agrees. At the same time, I would like to make a, a plea for additional volunteers. I've had one so far whose name and telephone number I know. And uh, at the last meeting, there was a lady who did discuss it with me on the way out. However, I do not have her name. Uh, so uh, anybody interested in serving on that committee, I would ask them to uh, make themselves known to me. This is an extremely important uh, uh, committee. Uh, we all know we have a, a lot of, uh, we've had continuing problems with our physical plant, and we simply have to buckle down and uh, study them together with the town. So does the board approve uh, deferring that until the October meeting? Yes, it's not due till the, is it the 15th? October 15th is the date, so we have, uh, the October 9th meeting is plenty of time. Um, next item on the agenda. Peter, can I ask a question? Every school employee, even though you're a parent, is interested in doing something like this. Is that a program that the board is interested in? If you're a school employee? Right, and also a parent. You know, I don't know. I'll, I'll find out. Does anybody uh, have a view on that? Can somebody who's uh, an employee of the school system serve on uh, a committee of this nature? I'll find out for you, Joyce. And. Uh, there's no, that's correct. There's no yeah. stipend involved, I believe it. Yeah. I have personally no objection. I'm just asking the question on uh, legal grounds. I'll find out for you. Are you interested in serving? <laughs> okay. Sorry? Okay, thank you. The uh, next item is to uh, approve a leave of absence. Uh, Dr. Pelletier? Uh, maternity leave of absence for a second grade teacher, Ingrid Stressinger, to begin on December 3rd, 
and extend through the remainder of the 90, 91 school year. Do I hear a motion? So moved. A second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Sorry. Dr. Pelletier, a new teacher. Consideration of nomination of a new teacher. Theodore Baker, one year appointment as a part time two fifths high school physics teacher. Meet unclosed. Do I hear a motion? Moved and seconded. Second. Any uh, discussion? All in favor? It's a vote. Is there any other item that uh, before we adjourn? Um, and let me let me ask the board if uh, if any of the board members want to go into an executive uh, session. I uh, I put that on the agenda, and uh, I guess in retrospect, it's not essential, but if it's uh, the will of the board, we will go into executive session. I have something to before you consider that motion. We had talked at the school board um, administrative council workshop of, of picking our first morning workshop with them, and a tentative date of October 12th was, was suggested. Are we going to confirm that? One of our quarterly meetings, eight workshop eight meetings. 8 to 10 a.m. October 12th. Okay, mm -hmm. we hadn't confirmed that because some of the board members were not sure. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, uh, do I hear a motion that we go into executive session? Sorry. I have to. I thought it would be the, uh, my understanding was we've got a list of six or seven things that we talked about, or you talked about during those two days. Uh, and I think it's more or less just to get together to find out where we are on those, kind of bring each other up to date and continue the lines of communication. Uh, I think it's even going to be more important to have those meetings in light of the changes in some of the administrative personnel so that we all know exactly the direction that we're headed in. So I don't see anything, I don't see anything formal. I can't speak for everybody else. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I don't need an executive session, but I would like to give some study materials to the members of the board that you're going to need in the next few days. And that's just a matter of my going running upstairs and passing them to you. Okay, that is not though something that you have to do in executive session. Not at all. So we could wait. Do, does any member want to go into uh, executive session to discuss a personnel matter? I can I can think of a um, a, a very brief, uh, perhaps five minute. Uh, well, let's do it. Okay. I move that we enter executive session. I second it. Okay. For it's the moved. purpose of discussing, of discussing a per personnel, personnel matter. matter. <laughs> yes. We have to have a vote. I, I move. Yes. Who second? Who moves second? Move. Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Okay. So we've gone into executive session. We